Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to show you guys how to build the ultimate indoor FPV quad. So first off, you're going to need one of these guys right here. This is the Horizon Hobby Blade and Ductrix. Um, this is also available in Bind and Fly if you already have your own Spectrum transmitter or you can buy it in a ready to fly with a small little controller. So you need one of these guys. Some other stuff that you would need to build the ultimate indoor FPV quad is this guy. You need a little video transmitter. Um, I got this from ReadyMate RC. This is their little micro setup. You can see right here, it's super tiny. It weighs about 4.6 grams with the case. So you wanna keep it lightweight. You can also remove the case. But the best thing about this guy is it's a FPV camera and a video transmitter built into one combo. And it has a cooler relief on top. Not to mention it's 25 milliwatts. So it's going to be decent, decent enough to be you know, used to fly around your whole house and around your whole house outside too if you want during those late night flights. Some other stuff you may need optional is FPV goggles or a monitor. You're going to need a Y harness. Um, I got the Fat Shark Ultra Micro Power uh, Splitter, so Y harness for you know, one battery to two power source right here. Um, this is optional once again, so if you want to build a you know direct solder setup, you can just toss this guy and not need it. But I want to build something that's going to be removable, which you guys will see in a little bit. Some other tools that you may need is diagonal cutters, some cheap ones or some sharp ones, some scissors if you don't have diagonal cutters, and maybe an X-Acto knife, which you guys may find useful. So let's go ahead and start tearing down this little blade and duct tricks and show you guys what's inside and how to get started. So you can see. This is the Blade Inductrix. Very, very tiny little guy. It's an awesome little setup. If you guys haven't seen this guy on YouTube, it's the new thing now. I mean, this guy's been out for over a year now. But the, the guys over at Big Whoop are tiny whoop guys. They made this thing so popular, which this is in high demand now. The motors are in high demand. So if you're building a tiny whoop setup, um, it's only a tiny whoop setup if you make this thing FPV with the upgraded motors. But for this uh, instance, I'm gonna just call it the Inductrix FPV setup since I don't have the upgraded motors because they're sold out and they're just so hard to get my hands on. So a transmitter, take all the good stuff out. Um, battery, well, you don't really need a charger right now, but it's good just to pop your battery on the charger as you're going. So let's take this and toss it somewhere down the floor. Here is the Inductrix, here's the battery, here's the remote control. I mean, for 70 bucks, you know, ready to fly. It's an awesome little setup, and you add the price of a little FPV setup, less than a hundred bucks, you're good to go to have some fun flying around your house. The good thing about this guy, if you guys haven't seen the reviews, I'm not gonna do a full review on the Inductrix since I'm a year late, and there's just so many awesome videos on YouTube already. I'm, I'll let you guys watch that. But the best thing about it is, it's a little EDF style FPV or micro FPV micro quadcopter it's got a little ductive fan some duct covers on here you can fly bump into walls and it's not going to damage the propellers and it's supposed to be very very durable i myself have crashed this guy just flying line of sight and i have to say it is on you know considerably really really durable i mean i've crashed it into myself i flew into the wall hit the tables hit lights went outside lost control for some reason crashed it it's still the same haven't broken a single thing yet so to get started with the fpv setup Go ahead and remove the body very simple and here we go this is what you have right up here so what you're gonna have to do is solder on your FPV camera so this is the reason why I decided to use this uh, ultra micro uh, you know splitter cable or a Y harness is because I'm gonna end up using these little connectors right here to make this more of a kind of like a plug-and-play and easily removable camera if I want to put this on a little airplane or another setup, I don't have to just be stuck with this guy permanently mounted on here. Now, initially I tried this guy, you know, I had one end hooked up to the battery and one end hooked to the camera and the quadcopter, but since this little guy from Fat Shark, the wire gauge is just so thin, it's too small, this wiring gauge could not deliver the power needed to fly my Inductrix for 10 seconds. After about 10 seconds, the light starts flashing, the thing couldn't fly because there was a big voltage drop and voltage loss because of the thin wire gauge. So, I mean, not really a bad thing, but two bucks for this you know, power cable and ended up, I'm gonna put it to use, even though I couldn't really use it. So what I'm gonna do first is cut this off right about here. 
You can always measure it how long you want it to be exact, but I'm just cut it off this much because the reason why, once again, like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna solder this to the battery terminals right up here. And then once I have that, I can just run this cable. It's a long cable, so I'll just probably like, you know, zip tie it or something like that. I'm gonna just run it through here. And then if I ever want to remove my FPV camera, cause I'm used to double stick tape, you can just plug it in, plug it out, plug it in, plug it out, and you can travel with it. You can use the same camera on all of your other stuff if you're on a budget. You can't buy, you know, two or three of these little cameras. You can just use one camera and for multiple aircraft. So another thing you can do is remove the case on this little guy right here. This is the ready-made RC uh, version. It's very similar to the Hobby King Quantum and also very similar to the Horizon brand. So I believe it's like the V1000 or something like that. But this is the FX797. You can just Google it. It'll run you anywhere from 40 to 50 bucks. I bought a couple of these from ReadyMade RC just because the price was nice and the stock was getting low. So what you're gonna do now is pop this camera out of the housing. We have two little tabs here. You just wanna pull these out, push the lens against the housing and just work your way out. You can do one side at a time if you want, just to be safe. Just be careful, don't put too much force and you know, break stuff. Once you have that out, you can just toss this casing but it's good to have the casing if you can be, you know, bashing it around or, you know, you have a more powerful setup. If I was actually running the upgraded motors from Micro Motor Warehouse, um, you know, the upgraded fast motors, uh, it would probably be a lot better to have the case since it's more protection for it. But with the stock motors, it barely has enough power to fly, but enough to fly for four minutes on the stock 25C battery. Also, too, this 25C battery is not going to be powerful enough for any fun flights or really, really wicked fun flights, but enough to just cruise around your house, calm environment with not a lot of punch outs because it's only 25C battery and 150 milliamp hour battery. A lot of guys are upgrading to the My Lipo, the 205, which I've, I have been hearing great reviews on that battery, so you guys may wanna check out that battery. If I find a link, I'll post it in the description box below so you guys can see that. But here we go, let's start. So what you need is a soldering iron, and if you're gonna go the direct solder route, you can just cut off this right here. Just measure according to length, snip it off, and solder on the power wire. Very, very simple. So let me show you guys exactly where to solder. So let me go ahead. If you're looking up at the board right here, let me get my focus right here. You're gonna see we have some power wires. So the power wire is right here. So you can look for the battery harness locate that and right on top of that you have the power indicator so there's two slots over here so if you're looking at with you know the battery terminal facing your top away from you the very left corner is going to be the ground and the more uh, in the pin more towards the middle or the center of this board is going to be the power or the positive so you want to make sure you have the polarity correct or else you will burn your video uh, transmitter and camera combo it's good to have a uh, battery meter like so just get a cheap battery meter you can go to Radio Shack Home Depot whatever buy like a 10 20 dollar you know voltmeter so that way you can check or properly check the polarity so that way it's not reversed when you're doing your soldering so let's go over here go into my soldering bench and I'll show you guys how to uh, easily solder on this together all right guys so we're on the bench so the first thing I'm going to do is strip your little connector if you go in this route or you can just strip a connection for your FPV setup so it's good to have some sharp um, diagonal cutters since it makes the job easier or just wire strippers I like to use flux I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of flux now this is a whole debate that some guys do not use flux because their solder you know already has flux so I got a cheap uh, soldering rod right here from Radio Shack this will work you don't need the most expensive one you can just use something that's simple, 25 watt will probably work really well. Old tip. So I'm going to just tip it and just make sure I pre-tin this wire and we have enough connection on here. And since you do heat up too much, let me focus so you guys can see exactly. Kind of hard, so let me focus on my hand. I think I'm just too close. Cause I have a uh, prime lens on here so here we go 
and our last try. So I have too much wiring and the insulation melted a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is just use my diagonal cutters and reduce the length of here so not too much exposed wire. What I'm gonna do next is get my solder. I'm gonna apply a little bit of flux on my battery terminals here just to make soldering a little bit easier. I'm gonna just pre tend this. So now you wanna find your correct polarity. I'm gonna do the positive first since it looks to be the easiest to solder on. I'm gonna just bend these into a little L shape so when I solder it, it's gonna be a lot more simple. And go here. Got my power. And then just double check. I don't like how long this one is, so I'm gonna just snip off some more of the ground so I don't have too much of the battery pin exposed. And come back and solder on the ground connection, which would be right here. And it's always good to pre tune your wires since it makes soldering a lot easier. You can see. Man, it's so hard to focus with this new lens I got. So you can see, there we go. That's all it is. Next up, what you're gonna need is some double stick tapey over here. This is where your scissors, slizzers come in handy. I'm gonna just put my soldering iron away. And since I'm using a little plug-in soldering iron, I'm gonna unplug it from the wall because I no longer need this bad boy. So next up, cut some tape. Boom, I'm using the VHB, some clear uh, vibration tape. Got this from Walmart for really cheap, it was like four or five bucks and it's really good tacky tape and it's clear. And when you remove it, it doesn't leave that foam residue like some of the other 3M outdoor adhesive. So what I do now is apply some tape. You wanna make sure you know what is your front of the aircraft. It's very easy to see, there's an arrow that indicates that's the front. That's the front, you can always plug in your battery, just do a quick test. And also you can plug in your camera and stuff like that just to see exactly you know where it is. And it's hiding here. And I think this is where I kind of want it. So the tricky part about removing this backing is, you know, it's really sticky. So you gotta use a little bit of your fingernails. And now, where is the front? I'm going to take this antenna and mount it more towards the side here so I can get some better range and just align it like so. Um, you know, you don't want to put this camera too far in the front or too far in the back because that will throw off the weight. So you want to make sure you have it nice in the center so that way it doesn't throw off your CG when you're flying it. And make sure it's in the center and I think that's it. Once we have that, just give it a nice little press. Make sure, just hold it for a few seconds. Um, you can also get the fancy 3D printed parts, but since I'm using stock motors, um, you know, I don't want to add any more unnecessary weight. So also too, you can also be anal and you know, don't use so much double stick tape because the more tape you use, the more weight you're adding on there. But you know, all the little weight does add up to be honest. So you gotta be careful. What I'm gonna do now is take my power wire from the video transmitter. I'm gonna just wrap it around here maybe around the lens because it's kind of long, just like so. And plug it in to, boom, plug it in there and look at this. It's got a clean little setup. And if I ever want to remove this FPV camera, I just got to peel it off of this clear tape and unplug it and it's good to go. And then the next thing you can do is once you have that done, it's called the power test. When you plug in your battery, you want to make sure there's no smoke. You see smoke, you're done. So before I even do that, I'm gonna just quickly double check my work because I could have done a really bad job, but everything looks good. All the connections look good. And plug it in, plug it in. Pow, everything lights up. We got power, we ain't got smoke. We're good to go, have some fun around the house. And there you go guys, that's how you built the ultimate FPV a little micro quadcopter. This little blade inductrix is awesome. I'll be sure to post a lot of my videos flying this stock um, inductrix around the house. I'll be flying it a lot until the stock motor fails and until the micro motor warehouse uh, motors come back in stock. 
I'll get a couple of those sets as spares. So in the meantime, there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free, post it in the description box below and I'll try my best to answer it. I know I'm usually bad at answering to the comments because I just don't have a lot of time. But there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys later and uh, there you go. Boom.